We all love a brand new willow in our hands, but how much do you know about the piece of wood you're going to purchase? Is it the right weight for me? How long will it last? How many runs will I make with it? Dave van der Valt knows just how important it is for every cricketer, young and old, to have a bat with the correct pickup and feel that suits each individual player. He has been handcrafting cricket bats for more than 15 years and we had the pleasure of taking a behind the scenes look at the bat making process at his Black Widow workshop in Cape Town. I played a lot of cricket um, and basically used to work for John Waite and Cilla Lynn in Joburg. Um, there was a sports specialist shop at that stage and uh, Dennis Lindsay at the time was finishing bats in South Africa for Grey Nichols and uh, basically always wanted to be involved in, in, in sport. I came back to Cape Town, worked for Ian Trot at Varsity Sports. I got injured so I couldn't actually play any more cricket at a, a decent top level. And I got the opportunity to go and do my apprenticeship at Hans County in the UK in 1994. Since starting Black Widow four years ago, Dave has continued making handcrafted bats with the same quality, care and passion that he is renowned for. I've always wanted to have you know top of the range bats, custom made, uh, for the club cricketer, uh, provincial cricketer and the international. So, you know, I just want to make sure I'm making a top bat at a reasonable price. Um, the big difference is that we oil our bats. We make sure that they're oiled and they're pressed uh, in uh, one or two different ways. Okay, no other companies seem to oil bats anymore, which is actually doesn't make sense because of the climate conditions in South Africa and Oz and things like that. You actually need to seal these bats in. Um, the other thing is we do make it very different to some of the Indian Indian brands. We don't try to dry out the timber anymore. Um, we only make small amounts at a time. So every bat that every piece of wood that comes in from the UK, um, those bats get made up as quickly as possible with the highest amount of moisture content in, inside of them. So when they go out there, they will last longer. And once again, as I say, all our bats are oiled and knocked in by ourselves uh, to ensure that you as a customer are going to get a bat ready to play and not something that just has a sticker saying ready to play. Each Black Widow bat is made from the finest English willow that Dave imports from J.S. Wright & Sons in Essex, England. The first step in the process is to shape the cleft. The shape of the jig is basically showing you where, where I'm taking the scoop out of the bat. In this one, for example, it's the middle scoop I'm taking out. Okay, that's pretty much done. Um, now we're going to go on to the next process, which is the pressing of the cleft. Now we're going to basically come through to here. Um, this is what's called the press. Now the angle that I took off that, that face there, okay, is the same angle as the roller that we're going to use here on the press to compress the wood. English willow is exceptionally soft. I can actually put my nail through there quite easily. So when the guys say that uh, top players' bats aren't pressed at all, it's uh, not really, it's, it's very far from the truth. They have to compress them in a way that there are different blades you use for players. Okay, from this stage I've just got to wet this. Um, we don't want it cracking under the, the, the pressure. The blades have to be pressed slowly um, so that they don't break up too quickly. In reality, because the willow is so soft uh, and got quite a high moisture content, we could almost press it halfway down if we wanted to, to that area. That's, that's how much we could compress it. The problem with that is it would be like a barn door. Your bat would last you 10 years, but it wouldn't go that well. So we've got to get the right sound and response when we're pressing these clefts. Because we use a different technique to most other companies, I won't fully press it now, I'll sort of slightly under press this. Um, once we've spliced it, which will go to next and put the handle in, we will then actually oil these. And then in about a day or two's time, we'll come back and repress them to where we feel they'll make a, a really top bat. From this stage, okay, I've got to splice one of the ends. And I've got to check which is going to be uh, the best end for the handle and which is the best end for the bottom of the bat or the toe. Okay, and what I look for here is how straight the grain runs. Okay, and I normally look at the bottom and have a look at how the grain, grain, grain runs through that side. I'll turn it around and have a look. And you can see by that one it runs off at quite a bad angle. So generally it's not as strong there, so this is probably my end I'm going to put the handle into. Okay, because you don't want to hit one at the bottom and it cracks, you know, quite quickly. Having selected which end to splice, it's now time to choose a handle to insert into the cleft. Handles made from uh, cane, okay, 
okay? Uh, it's the same stuff used for your garden furniture. What they do is they split that cane and they glue in uh, rubber inserts in between to make it more flexible, okay? Um, you need to have a good quality handle. Uh, the problem is a lot of the bats made abroad, they use a cheaper handle uh, and bats tend to crack quicker through the shoulder area. First, the cleft is inserted into a machine making a V-shaped cut at the top of the blade. Then, they will do a similar cut with the handle so that it will splice into the cleft for a perfect fit. Okay, now we'll have to work this down a little bit more to make sure it fits 100%. Okay, so that's onto our next process. Okay, what, what people must realize is the, the fit of this spliced handle into the, the cleft should be that tight that uh, you could actually play a game with the bat before the handle popped out. Okay? Um, you'll often find once again with guys that don't have much of an idea or don't have great uh, tools, uh, they'll have to start putting polyfiller in or extra little pieces. Okay? So this is a very, very crucial part of, of getting the bat together. Okay? Uh, they did a test with Lance Kruzner that where the splice is, the, the handle actually bent for, uh, 16 degrees when he hit a ball. So, you know, that's why occasionally if you get a dry handle, it can snap. The master craftsman then applies a generous amount of standard wood glue to the handle before slotting it perfectly into the splice of the blade. Perfect fit. All we're doing now is we're just putting a bit of pressure on the edges here to ensure that it clamps uh, uh, nicely overnight. We'll normally leave it for 24 hours, but I wouldn't suggest you play with it for at least 48 hours. Once the glue is dried and the handle is firmly attached to the blade, it is then thoroughly sanded down by Cecil, who has been mastering the art of bat making under Dave's tutelage for the last four years. What was once a log of wood is starting to take shape and is looking more and more like the finished product. After sanding it down, the bat is then oiled to ensure the utmost protection for the wood. This is the difference between an oil bat and a non-oil bat. Okay. Uh, clearly you can see the ones darker than the others. Uh, the reason we oil bats is that we can seal the natural moisture inside the timber. Okay? And that's why we do it. South Africa's got harsh conditions. We've got to make sure that we look after our bats. Uh, and the best way to treat it is with oil. Okay? The advantage I've got is we will repress this once we've oiled to ensure that it doesn't get too soft. Okay? Now comes one of the unique parts in the Black Widow process. As Dave uses a draw knife or Cooper's blade to shape each bat according to the customer's specifications. With this, we can take off big sections of the wood. Um, so we'll pre-shape with the draw knife. Once I've got the shape that I'm looking for, uh, I will then go on to other hand tools. From this stage, after speaking to the player, we'll decide whether he wants a higher sweet spot or a low one, and we'll make the bat accordingly to his specs. Dave then shapes the shoulders of the bat using the draw knife again. It's very important at this point to make sure the shoulders are the same on each side as it prevents cracking later on. He finishes the shoulders off with spoke shaves, after which the bat will be sanded down again to give the handle a really nice feel. The next very important tool are the old box planes. Okay, We've actually converted this old box plane to a rounded face so we can get a bit of a scoop going out the back of the bat. The reason we do that is because some of the guys now want to leave a thicker edge and we've got to remove the wood somewhere. Not a huge fan of it, but I've got to go with the changes being made. You can see here it's starting to create the slight curvature. And it also just keeps shaping the bat more and more. I do a lot of work for a lot of the international players, uh, local guys too. Um, and they all like something slightly different, whether it's a pickup of the bat or the shape of the handle, something like that. Um, Sashin's bats, for example, um, he's not interested in the scale weight of the bat. What's important to him is how the bat picks up. And that's what you guys must really realize that when picking a bat, forget about the size of it, the pickup is the most important thing and the feel. Okay? Cricket's such a mental game, if you're feeling uncomfortable with the bat, it's not going to do you any good. Okay? Um, so, as I said, it's all about pickup scale weight. The most important thing is make sure you can hook and pull with that bat. So, as a youngster, when you get to 40, 50, you aren't tired when you're trying to pull again. And the bat should be fine for you. There are a few tests you can do uh, with your wrists and things like that, but generally from sort of 12 upwards. This once log of English willow is a nearly usable cricket bat. But first, it needs a seal of approval. 
Dave personally brands each bat he crafts with the Black Widow logo to guarantee that the bat you have purchased is a top class original Black Widow. The final touches are given to the shoulders of the bat before Cecil applies glue to the handle and binds it with a strong twine that Dave imports from Scotland. The binding process strengthens both the handle and the top of the splice of the blade. The final stage of the process is the application of the all-important stickers. Cecil carefully places the Black Widow labels on the back and front of the blade as well as the edges. He then places the rubber grip onto the handle and there you have it. A handcrafted Black Widow cricket bat, made with the utmost care and expertise, ready to take on any bowling attack in the world. But that's not the end of the line. Before you take your bat off the shelf and shove it in your kit bag, Dave insists that you test it out in the Black Widow nets. Uh, look, we just want to make sure the guys um, are really happy with the handle shape that we've made up for them, the pickup and the weight, and then also obviously the response of the bats. Um, you know, local guys in Cape Town are lucky enough that they can come in and get those tested. The other guys up country buying bats, um, they've just got to go on my word for it. Uh, but we make sure that every single bat, whether it's a 900 Rand bat or a 4,500 Rand bat, they get tested by ourselves with the ball, making sure they respond well and uh, are oiled and knocked and ready to go. The other policy we have is that if the guys are unhappy, they're welcome to send them back and we'll sort out any problems straight away. Here we have one of Dave's sponsored players, Chris Cook, who plays English county cricket for Glamorgan, testing out the newly made bat. So how's that one feeling for you? No, it feels absolutely great. Uh, I think it's a gun. It comes off really nicely. A bit of a hammer. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've grown up in Cape Town my whole life, pretty much. Um, I went to junior school at West Farms Prep, and then on to Bishops. Um, I've always, I've always been associated with Dave. Even when I was at school, I always used to come in and see if I could uh, get a bat made from him and things like that. I joined Black Widow a year ago, um, and I put a lot of success um, in England down to the bats he's been making me. Um, they've been really great, and yeah, no, that personal touch is definitely uh, what what separates him from the rest. Bat making is an art form. Batting is a skill and the two go hand in hand. Without a good bat, you can't be a good batsman. Craftsmen like Dave are a rarity, and it is paramount as a cricketer that you use a top quality bat that is suited to your style and technique so that you can get optimized results on the pitch from a long-lasting product.